Good morning, this is Bill from the Upside of Downsizing and welcome to day one of our straw bale tool shed build. In uh, the past couple weeks we've laid a foundation using railroad ties and unfortunately I don't have any footage of that but if you have any questions about it uh, let me know in the comment box below and I'll be happy to answer any questions that I can. Basically what we did was we laid out a foundation using two rows of railroad ties that I then pin together using 3 8 inch rebar. And what we're going to be doing in today's episode is uh, laying out the first course of bales and preparing our webbing for strapping the three courses of bales together. So let's get started. Here we are loading up the first round of bales at the feed store. We could fit nine in the truck. And these things weigh 65, 70 pounds. And watch this guy. He throws them in and handles them like they're nothing. Whereas I'm kind of struggling, but I am the old guy. I was just telling my wife, you guys, you've been busy selling hay and straw. Mostly hay. You get a total of five. We went to the feed store today and we picked up 32 bales of straw. Unfortunately, with the cap on the truck, we can only fit nine in here at a time, so we're going to be making several trips. But these are the bales that will be used to build our tool shed that we have the foundation already made out of railroad ties. Okay, these are the first 18 bales. We have another 15, no, 14 more to pick up tomorrow. Okay, the 32 bales have been put to bed for the night. I covered it with a tarp and uh, better safe than sorry. We're not expecting any rain, but you never know. So tomorrow I'm going to head to the store and pick up some rebar as well as some eye bolts and you'll see what those are used for in a future video. The one thing I do want to say about this straw because people were always asking me about uh, where we get it and how much it costs and what kind of straw it is and everything like that. This straw is local straw from uh, southeast Arizona and it is a th what's called a three string bale. There are two string and three string bales and of course that is determined by how many strings it takes to keep the bale closed. Three string bales are heavier, they're bigger and thicker. Uh, they'll get the wall built faster. Obviously the two string bales would be lighter to work with but it means just more building blocks if you know what I mean. So these are three string bale and when you buy, buy uh, straw you just want to make sure that you're getting straw that has been stored properly and isn't any, showing any signs of rot or decay. 
and this straw here is in real good shape. This is sort of, it's similar to what we used on the straw bale uh, building for the solar shed, except that that was straw out of California, and it was much thicker. These individual, these individual shafts were much thicker and almost a little difficult to work with because they were so thick. So we were happy to see that uh, this is the the structure of the straw that we were able to purchase. Here you can see, if you look carefully, and maybe I can show it to you better here, you can see there's a one, two, and a third string. And you wanna make sure that the strings are really tight, that these are really bound tight, very important. So I think that's about it. People were asking me how much we paid for it at our local feed store. This is, uh, the local straw is $11 a bale right now. It's a commodity. It goes up and down depending on what time of year it is and what the supply is. So right now they're asking $11 a bale. Because we were buying 32, I kind of worked with the owner a little bit and he worked with me and we got it for $9 a bale. So $277 for this uh, straw right here. I thought that was a pretty good price. I've heard of cheaper straw, but again, you know, you pay for the quality as well. So tomorrow it's off to get more supplies and then probably Monday in two days we'll be able to get started putting these walls up. I'm hoping this is going to be a fun project today. We're getting ready to put up the straw bale walls on our tool shed and what we really need is a large mallet to persuade the bales in the position that we want them to be in. So I'm going to try to fabricate a wooden mallet today using a piece of uh, leftover railroad tie that you can see right there behind me. There we go. Railroad tie. And what I did was uh, went and bought some materials today, and I'm going to see if I can put a good old-fashioned persuader together. So here's this chunk of railroad tie that was left over. And what I did was I figured I could use a three-quarter inch floor flange secure it to the top, use a piece of, uh, where is it? I got a piece of heavy duty, heavy duty conduit, EMT conduit. I was gonna buy water pipe and the guy at the hardware store said, you know, he said, this will be a lot cheaper and I can thread it for you. So he put a thread on it that I should be able to screw right into that floor flange. And then I figured, I need more than a wooden mallet because we're going to be driving uh, long pieces of rebar down through the bales and just hitting rebar with this wood wouldn't uh, wouldn't do a whole lot or it would destroy my my mallet so I was going to get nailer plates for plumbing you know just to protect plumbing plates plumbing pipes from nails hitting them and then for the same price I was able to get them to cut me a piece of six by six I don't even know what gauge that is. It's probably like, it's probably an eighth of an inch thick steel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill four holes in the corner and I'll secure it to one end of that uh, piece of railroad tie. And then I got a wooden mallet on one side and I got a metal pounder on the other side. So let me get started drilling these holes. So I'm drilling the holes using my uh, Hitachi cordless drill and I wasn't really too sure of what to expect in terms of how difficult it would be uh, to drill through this eighth inch steel plate. I do have new, uh, new uh, drill bits, so I wasn't worried about them being sharp. And I didn't really have any cutting oil, so what I ended up using was some uh, air tool oil lubricant just to make sure that the, uh, the tip of the drill uh, bit doesn't overheat. And I took my time, I put the clutch, uh, the speed clutch of the drill down into position two and just let the drill do the work and kept adding some oil to make sure it stayed lubricated. And I was really careful on the first hole to make sure I wasn't applying too much pressure, just letting the drill bit uh, work its way slowly through the plate. The subsequent holes, I was a little more aggressive with the drill bit and uh, they went through actually much easier than the, the first hole. I was just being overly cautious, perhaps.
Now that the plate has been fastened to the end of the mallet, I'm attaching the uh, three-quarter inch floor flange to the side. And I've learned from past experience, always check and make sure that the threads are good on the floor flange before making the attachment. So these did work out okay, and I will then uh, find the center of the mallet and screw it down tight. So there it is, a quick quick little build of a Persuader. And I'll tell you what, it's got some weight to it. I'll bet you it weighs 25 pounds. Might be a little too heavy. If it is, I think what I'll do, if it proves to be too heavy, is I'll take that plate off and I'll cut this railroad tie down to the size of that plate and rebuild it. This is an experimentation to see how we can attach the webbing you, that we're going to use for strapping the uh, straw bale walls down and how we can attach it to the railroad tie. So if you imagine this is the railroad tie foundation, I tried two methods. One was going through the webbing with a one and a half inch or one and five eighths inch fencing staple going through. And the other one was starting the staple and then feeding it through and then driving the staple home. And after I completed this, I saw right away that by going through the webbing, it began to lose its integrity and tear. You can see that right there. Whereas when I went through the staple and then really drove it home, this is holding incredibly strong. I tried pulling it out with using channel locks, and there's no way I could pull it out. So I think it's going to serve our purpose. So again, if you imagine this being our railroad tie foundation, we'll lay our strapping out, and then we'll use, probably I'll probably end up using three staples going across to secure it to the railroad tie. Then once the walls are complete, we can run that webbing up and over our uh, box beam on top and use the metal buckle to tighten the strapping down. What Yvonne and I are doing in this clip is we laid three bales of straw down on the ground to simulate the height of a wall and then we're pulling out our webbing to uh, see how long the strapping needs to be in order to reach up and over the three uh, bales as well as over the box beam and we're cutting that to size. And now we've begun our layout of the bales. And this was always the trickiest part. So we kind of just played with it a little bit to see where the, uh, the best possible uh, locations would be for our cut bale pieces and tried to decide which bales looked best on the corners. So we continued to play around with the individual bales and we learned that the bales were of different sizes. Some were 48 inches long, some were 45 inches long. So quite often we'll have to stop and exchange bales and measure them out to see what fits best. Here you see us splitting a bale and we use the same webbing that we used to tie down the three courses to the foundation. We simply measure out the length we need, drive the webbing through the bale using our hay needle and using the buckles we secure the pieces and we pull out the size we need and it fit
now that we've uh, determined the position of the bales, we've removed them from the railroad ties, and I'm taking long 16 penny, I guess, nails and driving them in, creating sort of a porcupine effect on top of the uh, railroad ties, so that when we set the first course of bales down, we'll actually place them on top of the nails and drive them down, and it'll prevent the bales from shifting side to side to any great extent. Now with all the nails in place, we are going to reposition the first course of bales. And you can really feel them locking down onto the nails as we press down on them. Like anything else, it's important to get that first course right so that you don't have problems with the subsequent layers of bales. And as you can see, our dog Chloe has come in to make sure that everything is uh, copacetic. She likes to keep an eye on things. Make sure that the workers are working. And now I think our dog is watching a tennis match. Now I'm using our Thor's hammer, that's what we've called it. Thor's hammer to tamp down this first, uh, the first course of bales, making sure it's making good contact with the ground. So the first, the first course is always the most difficult. You have to figure out your layout. And this is gonna be it for today. And this is gonna be the end of this first installment of the video. But we will be uh, chronicling this every step of the way. So please stay tuned and watch for further episodes. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment box below. And we will see you tomorrow in the next video. And just a little preview, tomorrow we will start putting up the remaining three, there's gonna be a remaining two courses, so the walls will be three courses high. And then we will pin those with rebar and staples. But that'll be for the next episode. Thanks again for watching and we will see you in the next video.